I'm under the firm impression that entrepreneurs should never be doing their books for, for two reasons. One, you kind of mentioned, you should be focused on sales, expansion, marketing, getting clients, things that, that an entrepreneur needs to be doing in that first six months, a year of your business and, and not spending time on your books. So there's very few serious entrepreneurs who have built multiple businesses who, are do, who start a business and do the books of those businesses, because I know that's not the right way to go about building a company. The second reason, and I've learned this from experience, and we see this all the time in, in econ balance, is most entrepreneurs aren't good at bookkeeping. Most of the time, if you're doing your own books, it's just going to have to get redone later by someone who really knows what they're doing. And you're going to end up paying more for cleanup work than you would have if you just hired someone to do it right from day one. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the High Level Spotlight Sessions, where we showcase awesome marketers doing awesome marketing. Today, I'm joined once again by Nathan Hirsch. He is the CEO of Outsource School. Um, we actually already did a spotlight on that. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, a ton of amazing insights and resources as far as building your team remotely. But today, being the entrepreneur that he is, Nathan is back to talk to us about a new venture called Ecom Balance. Nathan, thanks so much for coming back on. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Great to be here again. I'm excited to talk to you. I mean, you reached out and you were like, hey, you know, uh, I'm working on this new thing. It's going really well. I'd love to show it to you. And I was like, oh, man, well, we got to do another spotlight because I think what you're doing is something that we don't talk about very much on this show that I think um, a lot of our viewers and listeners could really benefit from which is something that uh, I absolutely hate myself. So I'm sure a lot of people relate to this, which is the books, right? Like the, uh, the, the accounting side of our businesses, um, which again, is something I've always kind of shied away from. And I think a lot of us do, and that can lead to some not great scenarios. So, so take me back. How did you, you know, you built Outsource School, you, you know, you had that running. What led you to start building a company to help folks with their books? Yeah, sure. So before outsource school, I ran a pretty large company called FreeUp, and we scaled that to eight figures. And that company was acquired at the end of 2019. And the original plan was to travel for a year, take time off. Uh, the pandemic hit. So while we were stuck at home, my, my business partner and I, uh, we launched outsource school, which is essentially our hiring processes, how we were able to build businesses with great virtual assistants, doing everything from customer service to sales, uh, to different marketing, all of that. And we built that. It's still running. We've got a great community there if anyone wants to check it out. But we really used that to buy time to, to figure out what we really want to do next. I mean, we were in the, the VA space for a good six plus years, and, and we wanted to prove to ourselves that, that we could build a business differently. And on top of that, I think we, we like to focus on very unsexy parts of businesses, <laughs> uh, hiring being one of them. Everyone kind of hates to hire, but has to do it. And a uh, book seems like a, a good opportunity to, to get into another unsexy part of businesses. And now hiring is always something we've been good at, but so is bookkeeping. I mean, we had we hired a bookkeeper from day one on free up. Every month, uh, the month would end. Within 10 days, we would get our reports. We would go through them together and make great decisions on what the numbers are actually telling us. And not only that, but when we went to due diligence and to actually sell the company, we had immaculate books going back four years, and that's what helped us actually sell it. And I think a lot of people don't focus enough on the financials of the business like you said, most people hate doing bookkeeping, and I would argue that no entrepreneur should be doing their own books, but you should be getting reports that you can read and make decisions on. And that, to me, that's the key, making great decisions every single month. There's some added bonuses like less stress during tax season, easier to get an investment, a loan, sell your business, whatever. But I like to focus on those monthly decisions that you need clean books to be able to make. That's a really good point. I mean, you, <clears throat> you covered a lot right there. So let's break that down. First of all, as you know, we get as most of us start in our agency journey, we kind of start as solopreneurs, right? And then we we maybe use outsource school. We had a couple of team members, and and we're a small, lean team. Should I even be the one doing my books? Is probably where to start, right? And the answer is probably no. You want to spend that time building your business, and if you're not 
trained in that area, like I, you know, it would not be a good idea for me to be running high levels books. <laughs> like it, it, even if I only had a team of three at an agency, it would not be a good idea for me to be the one running the books. So I guess that's step number one, huh? Is coming to that realization of like, hey, we should let a professional do this stuff. Yeah. And I get asked a lot, like, when is the right time to stop doing the books yourself and, and hire a bookkeeper? And I'm under the firm impression that entrepreneurs should never be doing their books for, for two reasons. One, you kind of mentioned, you should be focused on sales, expansion, marketing, getting clients, things that, that an entrepreneur needs to be doing in that first six months, a year of your business and, and not spending time on your books. So there's very few serious entrepreneurs who have built multiple businesses who are do who start a business and do the books of those businesses because I know that's not the right way to go about building a company. The second reason, and I've learned this from experience, and we see this all the time in, in econ balance, is most entrepreneurs aren't good at bookkeeping. Most of the time, if you're doing your own books, it's just going to have to get redone later by someone who really knows what they're doing. And you're going to end up paying more for cleanup work than you would have if you just hired someone to do it right from day one. So and this is well, why let me jump in there. Yeah. What are those common mistakes that that I would make if I decided I'm going to try to do my own books? Because I'd imagine there's a lot that I don't even know that should be interesting on that I shouldn't be. Like, what are the common mistakes that you see when people try to do it themselves? Yeah. I mean, QuickBooks is its own degree, right? Like you can, you can study to become a bookkeeper. You can study to become an accountant. Um, just learning QuickBooks or Zero, which are the top two accounting softwares, that alone can take you hours and hours and hours. On top of that, you have to be able to reconcile bank statements. You have to be able to uh, categorize things correctly. There's a lot that goes into bookkeeping to be able to actually build the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow at the end of every single month and put in a way for you to actually track trends and, and make decisions on those numbers. So every business is different. There are certain things that you might mess up, like for e-commerce. We deal with a lot of e-commerce clients, and I know that's not your audience, but doing inventory and cost of goods sold is very complicated. For an agency keeping track of, of reconciling different expenses and making sure they're in the right place, that can get messy very, very quickly. So being able to actually do bookkeeping in QuickBooks and Zero correctly is hard and it takes a lot of experience to do it. And even if you are a bookkeeper or you're an accountant or you've taken a QuickBooks class, I would still argue that it's not a great use of your time. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, so you kind of mentioned the key things that we definitely need to be tracking, right? Like how much are we making? How much are we spending? What's the difference there? Um, and I would imagine having somebody, well, I've see, I see this happen at a high level, right? When I have to interact with the accounting teams and budgeting calls and this and that, things get fleshed out when you're working with somebody that knows what they're doing, right? They're like, wait a minute, I've got an inconsistency over here. So there's some money missing. Where is it? And then it leads to things like, oh, yeah, we're paying for some tool. I forgot about that. We're not even using that anymore. Let's make sure we go cancel that. So things like that are what I love about working with people that know what they're doing because you flush out things that are you're wasting money on, uh, things like that. So are those kind of, what are the most important things to be tracking? And, and talk to me about like what you've seen happen or get fleshed out that really can change things. Right. So I mentioned that entrepreneurs should not be doing their own books, but that doesn't mean that you should just ignore bookkeeping and not be on top of your finances. You should have a monthly meeting on your calendar every single month with your business partner, your husband, your wife, your team leaders, whoever it makes sense to have that with. And at Econ Balance, if you go to our site, we actually have an agenda that Connor and I have been doing every single month for the past six years in all of our businesses, where we actually go through line by line and look at the important things and make decisions based on those things. If you start off with sales, you want to compare your sales of this month to last month, and you want to compare it to the same month last year, assuming you've been in business for longer than a year. And you also want to compare different sales channels. So free up, which was a marketplace similar to an agency, we had hourly billing and we had fixed prices. You might have graphic design work and then PPC work. You might have different segmentation of your business and you want to know hey, maybe my PPC sales are going up, but my graph design sales are going down. You want to be able to know those trends so you can address any problems. Maybe someone on your team is slacking. Maybe your lead generation is outdated or whatever it is. From there, you want to actually look at the margin of what you're making for each segment, because a lot of people might have be selling five services, 
but you're only profitable on one of them and you're wasting a lot of time on four services that you're not making money. From there, looking at expenses and going through payroll and contractors, um, a lot of people fall into the trap where they're hiring and hiring and hiring, but their sales are not going up as quickly as they're hiring. So that's something to keep track of. Um, and then breaking down of other expenses, like you mentioned, being able to review, hey, what are the different subscriptions I'm paying for every single month? Hey, my, my Google cost went up this month. I should at least know why before I just let another month go by. Um, and so if you're able to go line by line or section by section down your income statement and discuss it with your business partner and look into things that don't make sense, that's what smart entrepreneurs do. So you don't need to be an expert bookkeeper or really understand finances to be able to do that. You do need to work with a bookkeeper that can put things in a way that you, an entrepreneur, can understand. Uh, you mentioned margins, which I really think is probably the most important piece of that discussion. And I think a lot of agencies have a hard time with that. I know that we used to because it can be there can be a lot of gray area when it comes to figuring out margins, right? It's like, oh, well, we use this uh, contractor for that and they don't just do that. They do these other three things. So it's like, how do you, you know, but I feel like when you sit down with a bookkeeper, they're like, no, we have to figure out how to calculate and quantify this or we won't know your margin. And we have to know your margin because if you don't know your margin, you don't know if this is worth doing, right? And I feel like those are kinds of things, again, that get flushed out and it kind of forces you to go through these exercises. whereas if you're not working with somebody that we're doing, you just kind of keep kicking that can and, you know, years could go by and you've just been making this bad decision month over month for years, which could really, you know, hopefully not destroy your business, but definitely set it back. Yeah, definitely. And knowing the difference between your gross margin, and your net margin, extremely important. Having a good system with your bookkeeper, because sometimes it is cut and dry, like you said, um, and you can actually fine tune it as you go. Other times it might make sense to average it out. Hey, you've got someone who's working 40 hours a week. Maybe you divide up 10 hours into four different parts of your business. And it's not always like that. Maybe one week he works 11, one week he works nine in one segment, but you at least get a good average that you can make decisions on instead of trying to spend lots of time every Every single month trying to get it down to the 15 minutes on what he's working on. So there's different creative ways to, to go about it. And there are certain businesses and, and certain agencies where we work with that the uh, cash basis where any money that goes into your business or th that you pay or that you receive gets put on the books right away doesn't make sense because they might have accounts receivable. They might have accounts payable. They might have contractors where they pay 50% up front and then pay the next 50% in three months. So being able to look at your books from an accrual basis can actually help you figure out what you're actually making. If you spend $50,000, let's just say this month, because it's an even number, but that 50,000 is for work that's really spread out over the next six months. You don't want to show a, a $50,000 expense in one month and then no expense in the other month. You can't really make any good decisions based off that data. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. So how do we get there, right? And I imagine this is the, the gap that Econ Balance is trying to fill. Like if we, if we flash forward to, wow, I'm a multi seven figure agency, I probably have a CFO at that point, right? Like I have somebody on the team who's responsible for all the financials, but to get there is a long road, right? And so we we're, we start at the point where we can't afford a full-time um, money person or a CFO, somebody to function in that role. So how do you get there from, you know, hiring somebody hourly to do this work to the point where you can actually hire somebody full-time? Yeah. So there, there's kind of three parts of it. There's a CFO, which you mentioned, once you get bigger, that might be necessary. Usually the CFO is not the same person who's doing your taxes and not the same person that's doing your, your bookkeeping. No matter how small you are, you need an accountant, a CPA, someone who can file your taxes. If you're international, let's say you're in Europe, you want a European CPA. If you're in the US, you want a US CPA. We don't provide taxes at Econ Balance, although I'm happy to personally recommend my CPA that I've worked with for 10 years, who's great and helped me sell a company and I don't make referral money on that. He's just awesome. But what we've found, and this is going back before Econ Balance, is hiring your CPA to do your bookkeeping is not always the best move. First of all, it's usually more expensive. And second of all, they're doing your books in a way to be able to pay taxes. You can have your books done correctly in a way that you pay taxes right, while not be, be done in a way that you can actually make decisions on 
on time every single month. So you want a bookkeeper that knows entrepreneurship. They know your industry. They can create a chart and a chart of accounts that you can interpret and they can help tweak the books to, to adjust to change in your businesses as you go and can work with your CPA. So step one is have a CPA, have a tax person. Hopefully people listening who have been in business for over a year paid their taxes last year and have someone uh, who can do their taxes and use that CPA to find a great bookkeeper that can work in the same way. You want your CPA and your bookkeeping service to be on the same page so that you have two people on your side, eventually three people on your side when you have that at CFO. So with Econ Balance, we want to be a fair price for high-level bookkeeping that can work directly with your CPA so your taxes get done right, they can do the tax strategy, and we can do the books in a way that you can make great decisions every single month, and then you can always add that CFO later for higher-level decisions. And how does it work? Is it just like a retainer? Because you know, throughout the month, there are things that need to be sent to the person doing the books, right? So how do you... I mean... It's, it'd be hard to track that kind of hourly, right? Like, oh, it, it took me one minute to receive your email and log it over here, you know? Yeah, so we do everything fixed prices. We, we charge clients on the first of the month a fixed price. Um, we get them their books by the 15th every single month. Now, when people sign up with us, First of all, there might be catch up and cleanup work. There might not be. If you haven't done your books in six months, we got to get those books caught up before we can do anything else. So we might charge a fixed price just to get that caught up. And we have what we call integration, which is where we get view only access to as much as possible to save you time down the line. We don't want to have to request statements from you every single month or credit card receipts or whatever it is. We want to get access to your, your Stripe, your bank account, your credit cards, the ones that you use only view only access so that we don't have to, we can't actually move money around, but we can pull the data that we need every single month without bothering you. Now, if you randomly go out and buy something for $15,000 that you never bought before, we might have a question on what that was so that we categorize it correctly. But for the most part, we learn your business so that after 60 days or so, we don't have to come to you for every little thing. We already have access to everything we need. So the first step is get a quote from us. You can do that on our website. Agree to that quote, get integrated with us. We have access to whatever we need. We make that easy. And then we'll get you caught up and get you on a monthly path going forward where we charge you every first, you get the books by the 15th, and you can add that meeting that we discussed before. So the last thing I want to talk to you about, because I think this is something that's often overlooked when we talk about exiting as an agency, right? It's, it's pretty rare. It's pretty hard to do. And the folks that have done it usually have the same advice, which is, hey, you have to systematize your business. It has to be, you know, broken down into like, you know, you need to productize your services. You need to have people on retainers or subscriptions. Um, and that all makes sense. But you mentioned the bookkeeping, right? Like crystal clear bookkeeping makes a business much more sellable, um, which makes total sense to me. So talk to me about the importance of your books and what they look like if you do actually want to try to exit as an agency owner. Yeah. So I know a lot of people that buy businesses and they won't touch businesses that have messy books. That's a, that's a disaster waiting to happen. So having clean books at, at a bare minimum is, is what you need to, to sell your business. Now, Clean books can also help you get a better multiple when you go to sell your business. If you do it a cruel basis opposed to cash, if that makes sense for your business, that can get you a higher multiple. Joe Valley from Quiet Light says that all the time. He put that in his book, uh, Exitpreneur. Um, there's also certain deductions that if you have things categorized correctly, you can actually use that to increase your multiple or increase what the multiple is. So for example, conferences. If you spent $20,000 last year going to conferences, well, the person that buys your business probably doesn't need to necessarily do that. They can if they want to, but they, you can actually deduct that so that that $20,000, let us say you get a three times multiple, is actually an extra $60,000 that you get when you go to sell your company. So that's part of it. The other side of it is trust. When we went to sell our business, it started off with a simple phone call where they asked questions about our business. A lot of those questions had to do with the numbers of our business. And because we had great books and we had been meeting every single month and we knew the numbers of our business very well, we were able to answer those questions. And down the line, when we went to due diligence, 
the, the, what they saw in our QuickBooks account matched exactly what we told them on the phone, which builds a lot of trust when you're going to sell your business. If someone's mm -hmm. talking to you and what you tell them doesn't match what they're seeing in their books, that's a gigantic red flag to someone that could potentially buy your company. So clean books are, are, are essential if you want to get the highest possible multiple or even be able to sell your business in the first place. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. That's a really good point. Um, and then I'm imagining, you know, as far as econ balance and how you guys work, it, it's custom pricing for everybody. Is it, or is it a flat minimum fee? I just want to make sure that I ask so that people listening who are interested, um, you know, don't waste their time or your time if it's not a great fit. Yeah. So if you go to econbalance.com slash pricing, you can see ballpark pricing for six, seven and eight figure businesses. So you at least know what you're getting into before you submit for a pricing quote. Um, our minimum is 250 a month. There's some creative ways to get that lower, like referrals, paying a year up front, uh, using ACH, stuff like that. Um, but if you're listening to this and you're like, man, 250 a month is outrageous. I can't afford that. Then it's probably not a fit to, till later. Our goal is not to be the cheapest price out there. We want to be a fair price, but an extremely high level customized service. So that's really what, what we shoot for. Um, but And pricing is something I think in the first year of any business, especially a fixed price monthly business, you're always trying to tweak. So we've come a long way in the past six, seven months, and I'm sure that we'll make tweaks going forward to, to make it easier. But to answer your question, yes, it's custom pricing, but we don't just pull it out of our whatever. Um, it's all on our site with ballparks, and it all depends on how complicated your business is. Do you have 10 bank accounts? Do you have two bank accounts? Are you using banks that are easy for bookkeepers to get access to, or do you have to send us statements every single month that are manual? So a lot of those, along with the size of the business, factor into it. Very cool. I don't doubt that it's all there and neatly organized, Nathan. You're a, you're a buttoned up kind of guy. I really I enjoy that it. about you. <laughs> um, congrats. I think this is really cool. I think this is, uh, you know, when we talk about SaaSpreneurship and this new kind of world that we've created where anybody can kind of, any entrepreneur can just white label high level and start building a SaaS company. There are, you know, there's usually a couple of ancillary pieces that I recommend, right? Let's, hey, you know, you probably want to find yourself a builder, right? Somebody who can make sure the back end of everything is running smoothly. You probably want a support person so that, you know, you don't have to deal with questions about the software and that kind of stuff. And then you probably do need a bookkeeper, right? That's probably one of the other fundamental pieces that if you have it in place, you could really build this business, this career for yourself that's kind of running itself. Um, so I think that super entrepreneurs, um, is the same way. He's like, you know, show me an unsexy, uh, business and, and I'll show you the moat around it, you know, that that's going to keep you protected. So congrats. I think it's an awesome idea. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. And I, I like to, to build things that, that I wish I had back on previous businesses. And I, I know how important bookkeeping was, and it took us forever to, to find a great bookkeeper for free up and for our Amazon business before that. So hopefully we make this a lot simpler for entrepreneurs going forward. Very cool. Um, well, let's make sure we got the, the website to econbalance.com, right? Yep. And if you submit for a pricing quote, mention go high level, you get two free months on me. So pretty risk free to, to try us out. I appreciate that. Awesome. Well, Nathan, thanks for coming on to share it with us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.